In this video, we are going to discuss dienes. And dienes are important because we're going to see a, a class of reactions with dienes. Now, when we take a look at the word diene and we analyze a bit, uh, it a bit, we see a prefix there, die, which means two, and then enes, meaning an alkene. So we're going to be looking at molecules that have two alkenes. Now, having two alkenes makes us a diene, but there's different types of dienes. There's accumulated diene, a conjugated, and an isolated diene. I want to draw out this accumulated diene right here so we can get a better understanding of what it looks like. But this is what it looks like if we draw it out. Okay. So you can see that this central carbon right here is flanked by double bonds on each side. So that central carbon does in fact have four bonds and it is stable. Okay. And I drew these wrong here. These are actually going to be, let's see here, a wedge. There's our methyl. So there's our methyl. And there's our hydrogen. That's actually the accurate way to draw it. We have what's a conjugated diene, which we've seen before in previous videos, where it's simply a double, single, double. Now, I want you to be pay close attention. The conjugated part of this alkene is right there. Okay. And that's... And we are going to label these carbons one, two, three, four. We're not going to worry about this fifth carbon because it's not part of that conjugated pi system. Okay. So when we're looking for conjugated dienes, we're just looking for that pattern, double, single, double. And then in an isolated diene, you see that it's double, single, single, double. That is not conjugated. That is completely isolated. And this, these terms hopefully will make more sense when we start looking at the atomic orbitals and the molecular orbitals so you can see why this is so important. This right here is going to be the molecule that we are going to discuss most in these upcoming videos. That's the important one to uh, know. All right? So in a conjugated molecule, just see how in this little image right here, I only have the four carbons. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Those are conjugated because what do we have on each of those four carbons? We are going to have the p or orbitals, orbitals right there. And that p orbital, these two p orbitals right here, that's what's responsible for that pi bond. And then these two right here are what's responsible for that. But that's when we're looking at the orbitals just as atomic orbitals. But atomic or orbitals, mathematically, they blend together into what's called a molecular orbital. And what makes conjugated uh, molecules so important and so interesting is the fact that the electron, the electrons that are found in these double bonds right here are not localized. They don't just stay. So the, let's, these electrons in that double bond do not stay between carbon one and carbon two. But those electrons are traveling all the way through the conjugated pi system. And they can travel all the way through because every single orbital here is in line with one another. They're on the same, uh, you can, let me backtrack here. Do you see how the carbon is in the plane? The pi bonds 
where the pi orbitals are above and below that plane. So above and below that plane. And so it makes it possible for the electrons just to flow through back and forth. And whenever electrons can flow freely, that's we turn that delocalization. So these electrons in those pi uh, bonds there are delocalized, and that makes them very, very stable. But when you take a look at accumulated diene, you can see that the these p orbitals and those p orbitals are not on the same plane. They're not all above or below. So these electrons here cannot go over there because the two electrons, one electron, one electron, do you see how these blue right there? It's just that the electrons are not delocalized. And then this one in an isolated diene, you can see that there's this major gap right here. The electrons can't jump over that gap and go over to the other set of p orbitals. It just does not happen. So I like to compare the conjugated versus the isolated. You can see how it's free, all connected, and here we have a gap. Now heteroatoms can also participate in a conjugated system. You can see this enone right here. What do we have? Double, single, double. So oxygen here is our heteroatom. So our conjugated part of the molecule is right there. Okay. And then in this cyclic amine right here, what do we have? Look at this. Double, single, double, single, double, single, double. So that heteroatom and that nitrogen is in a conjugated system. Now, how do we make ions? Well, we take a allylic halide molecule, and we can treat that with a strong bulky base, and that's going to give us our diene. Mechanistically, we can see that what's going to happen here is we have a hydrogen there, and the strong bulky base, which I'm going to represent as just a B minus, is going to come. I'll draw the B minus down here. It's going to come and grab that proton, bring that in, and then kick off the bromine to give us that molecule. You can also make dienes when you have a dihalide molecule. Like now, practice. What, how do you think the mechanism proceeds with that molecule there? A good thing to practice and to make sure you can see that. And if you have any questions about the mechanism for that one, let me know during class and we can talk about it. Okay. Now, when we take and look at this diene right here, and we're focusing our attention on this carbon and that carbon, and looking at the bond distance between those two carbons, and we take our measuring tape out and we measure and it's 148 picometers and we compare that to this alkane molecule and we can see between the two carbons we have 153 picometers so we have a difference in bond lengths and this is interesting you may not suspect Expect it to be shorter at first glance. You're like, hey, there's a single bond right there. So it should be the same as that one, but it is not. And part of the reason for that is due to hybridization. So these two carbons right here are sp2 hybridized, and these two are going to be sp3 hybridized. sp2 hybridized carbon-carbon bonds are going to be shorter than sp3 hybridized carbon-carbon bonds. 
Now, why is that the case? Well, it comes back to looking at the atomic orbitals of these hybridized carbons. And this right here is a p orbital that we just use as a reference. When we hybridize the p orbital and the s orbitals, we're going to get the hybridization states. Well, the hybridization states, not that one. It would be these three right there. And what we say is that the sp has more s character than the sp3. And when I look at that and say more S character, what I'm looking at is like this guy right here is more spherical in comparison, in comparison to the sp3. The sp3 hybridized orbital looks more like a p orbital, and the sp2 and the sp looks more, or it's starting to look more like an S. Okay? So more spherical. So what you can look at is I kind of just look at the distance between the here and here and make the comparison. Do you see how that distance right there is getting shorter and shorter? Well, that's showing you the bond length. The bond length is influenced by the shape of the atomic orbital. And when the atomic orbitals gain more S character, they're just naturally going to get shorter.